Amen. You may be seated. We're going to announce those who got baptized. And what I want you to do is just stand up. And then once we finish everyone's name, my wife will hand you the certificate as you're standing up. So I want you to put your hands together for uh, Julius Alvarez. Let's go ahead and stand up. Jayla Crowder. Luis Rodriguez. Jamila Valencia. Jaden Valencia. And Sam Witherspoon. Let's give it up for them. They got baptized in Jesus' name. My wife will hand you the certificate. We're so proud of you. And we're so excited that you got baptized. And for those of you who want to get baptized, we're going to do one in the wintertime outside because you waited. No. <laughs> Teach you a lesson for waiting. No, no, no. We'll have another one um, in the springtime around. So if you want to get baptized, we will have one then in Jesus' name. Today, we're going to get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you haven't received a communion juice with your cup here, uh, just raise your hand and one of the ushers will make sure you get one. If you haven't received one already, just raise your hand. Um, this is a commandment of the Lord that we partake of the Lord's Supper remembrance. The only requirement that we ask is that you're saved. That's the only requirement that we're asking of you, that you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And if you did that, you are eligible to partake of the Holy Communion. So if you need one, we got some hands right here, a hand. Anybody else who hasn't received theirs, I will tell you what to do, when to eat the bread, and when to drink the juice. So just uh, hold on there as we do this. Everybody has received it. Because this is a very sacred moment that we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So once everybody is ready and settled in here, we're going to partake of it. Um, and what this represents, the body is represented by the bread. So there's a, a thin piece of plastic up there. You can um, remove that once, I, once, you, once we're ready. But the bread represents the body of Christ that was beaten for our sins. And this is why we partake of this communion. This bread should always remind you of what Christ did for us on the cross. And then the juice in the cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed, that he covers us with his blood so that we are righteous in Jesus' name. And there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's power in the blood. And, and so it's very important. The bread represents the body and the juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told us to do this in remembrance of him. And But before we do it, he always tells us to examine ourselves. And we're going to read the scriptures in a moment. But he always tells us to examine ourselves. So that if you have an issue with your brother or sister, before you partake of this Holy Communion, deal with it. Tell them, you know what, forgive me or I forgive you. Uh, deal with the issues, with sins. Ask the Lord, please forgive me of all my sins. May the blood of Jesus Christ wash them away. So what we're going to do, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask the Lord to examine our hearts. And that's when he goes in deep. And he lets you know if there's some issues in your life. Because the Bible says you need to examine yourself before you partake of this. This is not something we take very lightly. This is not something that we just do. This is something that the Lord says is serious. And so let's um, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you would examine our lives. Examine me, Lord. If I've offended somebody, Father, I pray that they 
receive forgiveness, God. And anyone who has done wrong to me, I forgive them, Father God. And I pray, Lord, before I partake of this communion, that you wash my sins away, Father. Because I want to go as white as snow into this holy moment of holy communion, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that you bless this bread. You bless this juice which represents the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you said in your word to do this in remembrance of me. And so today, Father, bless the bread. Bless the juice, Father God, as we remember what you did thousands of years ago on the cross that nobody else could do but you, Lord. You suffered. You took the, the, the lashes on your back because your word says by your stripes we are healed. You took the nails in your hands. You took the nails in your feet. And today, God, we thank you because we would not have a relationship with God the Father if you didn't do that. That cross is the bridge, Father God. That cross has brought redemption to our lives. And so today, I ask Holy Spirit, be with us as we partake of this Holy Communion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let me read the word of God. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. You may eat the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread... And drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You may drink the juice. Amen. Now what we do is we give thanks to the Lord. So I just want you, in your own words, to give thanks to God right now. Father, I thank you for the sacrifice you did on the cross. I thank you, Lord. That even though I was a sinner, God, you redeemed me. Even though I didn't want you, Father God, you wanted me. And I thank you, Lord, for that agape love that you've shown me, Father, throughout my life. I thank you, Lord, that you would stay on that cross. Even if it was just for me, God, you would have done it. And I thank you, Lord, for you thinking of me when you were on that cross suffering, Father, being humiliated, Father God, taking on the sins of the world so much that even God the Father turned his head on you, Father Jesus. And God, I, I cannot say enough thank yous, Lord, for what you did. And I thank you, God. I honor you. And I praise you because today I'm redeemed. I'm set free. I'm a new creation in Jesus Christ because of that cross, because of the blood, because of the body, Father God, that you gave for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that great gift of salvation with nothing in return you ask of us, but it's a free gift of eternal salvation. I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. The ushers are go around and you can um, throw away your cup there so it's not a bother or nuisance to you. But this is a powerful moment that the Lord has brought us to that we're able to uh, take this Holy Communion. And so it's important, guys, that you remember all that the Lord has done for you. He's done miracles. He's done healings. Don't forget about what he's done in the past just because you're facing a present uh, situation today. God is good. Amen? Everybody say, praise the Lord. 
Amen. We want to welcome those on Facebook and YouTube as well. Thank you for joining us. You're more than free to always come to the house of the Lord. If you're in the Chicago land area, if you're not, you want to fly in, praise the Lord, fly in. In Jesus' name. All right. In these next few weeks, I'm going to deviate from preaching on Ephesians because the Lord has really placed this in my heart to share with you guys um, however long it's going to take, especially with what's happening around the world right now, what's happening with our elections right now, that we need to look at what does the word of God say? What's happening? Did God know what was happening? Does he show it in the word of God? What was going to take place? And so we're going to dig in from some deep revelation that uh, I've been reading some books, I've been praying, and I want to share with you. This is probably one of the most important messages series that I'm going to share with you. And then once we get done, we'll jump back into Ephesians if the Lord allows. But he's kind of rumbling something else in my spirit before we get back into Ephesians. And don't worry, Ephesians is not going anywhere. It's still there. You can still read it. And, but um, this is very important because of what's happening in our nation. And if you don't have your head in the sand, you know there is something happening in the spirit realm. There's something going on. And today I want to start with the intro. I'm going to kind of just lay down some foundations here. And um, I'm going to try to get through it all because there's, there's a lot of information here that I want to share with you and a little bit of time. So we're going to jump right in. And, it's, and I title this today, Beyond the Natural Realm. Everyone say natural realm. We're going to look beyond the natural realm. Because how many of you know there's more to this earth than we can see with our physical eyes? You got to understand this. There's more than what you see with your physical eyes. If you only believe in what you see with your physical, physical eyes, the enemy has already got you blinded. You got to be able to see in the spirit realm. How many know what I'm talking about? All right, I got five of you. Amen. <laughs> you got to get beyond this physical eye. You know that saying, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, it is true to a point, but it's not just talking about physical eye. It's also with our spiritual eyes. You got to be able to see things in the spirit realm that others are not seeing. See, those who are not believers are not seeing it clearly through the eyes of God. Now, those that are in the cult, those that are in the demonic realm, they're seeing in the spirit realm, but they're seeing it through the lens of a demonic spirit. And so it's twisted. It is blurred. It is like what you're hearing in the news on, 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 on TV day to day. You're not hearing what... I used to grow up and hearing the news. I would just hear the news as it was being, um, as it was happening. There was no twisting. There was no manipulation for to get across an agenda. But today's news is not news. Today's news is manipulation of an agenda that people are trying to get across so that they can begin to twist and use a Leviathan spirit to begin to show people and to get people to believe what they want them to believe. If you don't see it, you're blind. It's not when I grew up. The news reporter reported the news. They didn't make up the news. Nowadays, it's, they're making the news. It's all manipulation. And so if you don't see with your spirit eyes, you're going to believe what's being said. See, does what we can't see affect what is happening around us today? That's a very important question you need to ask yourself. Is what's happening in the spirit realm affecting what's happening around us in the physical realm? You need to answer that question. Are we living in the last days right now? 
And does the Bible explain to us prophetically what is happening in the world today? These are questions you need to ask yourself. Is what you're seeing happening right now, did the Bible talk about it thousands of years ago? Is there revelation in there that, not, that we're not seeing because we're getting the feel-good messages? We're getting our ears scratched, our back scratched. We come in, we feel good, we leave, we feel good. But we don't get into the prophetic realm of what's happening around the nation and around the world and what the Bible is saying about it thousands of years ago that we see unfolding right before our eyes today. If you don't see it, you're asleep. Everyone say asleep. asleep. Touch your neighbor and say, wake up. Touch your YouTube neighbor and Facebook neighbor and tell them wake up. Amen. Because today I want to share some revelations. That's what I'm saying. This, this is one of the most important messages because our world, and especially the United States of America, is on like a level, is at a, a, a turning point. And we could go one of two ways. This is how important this what's happening in the world today in this election that is about to take place. It's about to shape the future of this country. And what we're seeing around us is telling us what's happening in the spirit realm. And the Bible is telling us this was predicted thousands of years ago in the word of God. That's why Revelations has in, in, written in there throughout there, let him... Who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is what? Saying. saying. See, the Spirit is talking. Both spirits. The Holy Spirit is talking and demonic spirits are talking. The question is, what spirit are you listening to? That's going to begin to show where you're thinking, where you're heading, and what you're believing right now. Are you believing the Leviathan spirit or are you believing the Holy Spirit? So I want to share some revelations with you in the next few weeks as we go into one of the most important elections of our nation that we've ever faced. This election, this election coming up in November, I believe is the most important election that the United States of America has ever faced. And we're on like the edge. And the Lord is looking, which way is my people going to go? What is my church saying? What is my church people going to do? So then I can see what path the United States is going to be on in this near future. And like I shared with you, I've been reading some books. I've been hearing from the Holy Spirit on what's happening around us right now. And I want to share some of this with you. So this is just the beginning. This is just week one. I'm telling you, we're going to get deep in this series. And you're going to get blown away about what the word of God really said thousands of years ago. And how we're seeing it being revealed today. And the only way you cannot believe that God is real is if that the Bible says only a fool says in their heart, there is no God. You would be a fool not to believe what's in front of you, what the word of God said thousands of years ago. That's what the word of God is calling you. If you don't believe, you've been twisted with the Leviathan spirit. But I pray, and I know that people here at Dunamis Life, we, we're not twisted by that Leviathan spirit. Amen? Amen. So let's look back at almost a year ago. On October 7th, 2023, something happened that was spoken about in the word of God that's very important to us today. Does anybody remember what happened October 7th, 2023? What was that? I can't hear. 
Israel, what happened? Israel got attacked by the Palestinians, by Hamas, by a terrorist group. October 7th, 2023, Israel was attacked. Now, we're gonna, we might not get much into the exact things of that today, but we're going to see how the scripture predicted it to the month and date. If you understand the word of God. See, God, God, nothing takes God by surprise. The word of God has everything that we need to know of what's happening. But the problem is we want to just hear messages that scratch our ear. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with being messages on being blessed. I believe in that. I believe in prosperity. I believe in all those things. Believe me, if, you, if you've been here long enough, you know. But it's not just that. We got to go into the meat of the word as well. And we got to look when big things are happening around the world, does the Bible say anything about it? Because a lot of people just think, well, the Bible just talks about what happened thousands of years ago, says a few little things, Jesus is coming back. No. The Bible is very precise. Things that are happening in this world just don't happen by chance. They've been prophesied in the word of God thousands of years ago. God already knew. Why? Because God already existed then. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, he exists in the future already. That's why when he speaks into your life, he doesn't speak into your life how you are now. He speaks into your life how he sees you in the future. Right now, you could be an alcoholic, a drug addict, a prostitute, just someone all laid out in the world, but God is telling you, oh, you know what? This is what I see of you. You're a man, a woman of God. <laughs> You're a preacher. You're a teacher. You're an evangelist. You're a prophet. You're going to do great things for me. Your life is going to turn around. Your family's going to come back. Your marriage is going to be restored. Your finances are going to be restored. Why? Because he's ready. He sees it because he's there. But you're here in the present and all you see is this big mountain of despair. And then you hear the Leviathan spirit is never going to change. It's never going to turn around. It's always going to be the same. And you... And you make a covenant with the Leviathan spirit. Yeah, you're right. As soon as you make that covenant, bam, he's got you. You got to learn not to make covenants with lying spirits. If you're going to make a covenant, make a covenant with the truth. The word of God. Yes, God, I believe in that in Jesus' name. I believe I'm going to be prosperous. I believe God is going to heal my body. They might say I have cancer. They might say I have high blood pressure. They might say I have diabetes. But I believe in the name of Jesus, God is going to heal me, and I'm going to make the changes necessary so that I stay healed. Don't let God heal you and you keep eating Twinkies. And you got diabetes. Stop the Twinkies. Say, in the name of Jesus, that demonic Twinkie spirit, get out. When you go to the supermarket, don't walk down the Twinkie aisle. You know where it's at. Y'all be acting like, oh, the devil's tempting me. No, you're not. You tempted yourself. You knew. You see it on the big letters, sweets, cookies, donuts, Twinkies. Don't go down that aisle. Some people cry out to God for things that you're doing yourself. You, oh, that devil, he's worrying, ruining my health. No, he's not. You are. God healed you, but you keep doing dumb stuff. And God's like, how many times do you want me to heal you? Say no to the cake. Say yes to the asparagus. I'm still working on that one myself. Amen. It's hard to say yes to the asparagus. It's so green. and I know, I know. You, you guys are all Christian over here that love that stuff. See, God's still working on me. 
I got issues too, amen. See, many people believe this was an evil terrorist attack against the nation of Israel. I don't say all people because there are people who rejoiced over that. They celebrated it. You see, here in the United States, especially in our colleges, if you don't think that it's important in what college you choose, these colleges are, they're not teaching, they're indoctrinating. Yes, amen. You got these kids marching for terrorists. And they're like, oh, the Valley's did it, it's all for you. I, and I'm going to share some things that's going to blow your mind. In, maybe in this sermon, I'm not sure. We'll see. Of where all that came from. But we got to march in. Give them back their land. Give them the Palestinians, this and that. We see it. If you don't see it, you're blind. It's all over the news. When they had the Democratic National Convention, they were out there marching. Free Palestine, free Palestine. It's all prophetic and demonic. You're going to see why. So, even if I don't get in it today, that means you got to keep coming back to hear the rest. <laughs> so if you're out there with the free Palestine, I'm here to tell you that's demonic. Amen. And I'm going to explain to you. Like I said, if I don't get it today, I'll get it in these next weeks coming up. You're going to see how you've been manipulated by the media. And that's why you believe that. Because you don't even know what a Palestinian is. And you're out there free. Not you guys, I know, I know. But they're out there saying, free them! What are they? What land do they have? What does the word of God say? Amen. We'll get in there. Just for those of you who already know Bible, you already know, that's not their land. That's the land that God promised the people of Israel. Amen. They stole the land from Israel. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm telling you, this, th these next sermons are going to blow your mind. And they're so needed. So the question then becomes, if that was an evil terrorist attack on the nation of Israel, the question is, what is evil? I'm glad you asked me that. That was a great question, guys. Because if it's evil terrorist attack, because there's no such thing as a good terrorist attack, when they attack our country and, and, and made planes into bombs, everyone agreed that was evil. Evil. So the question is, what is evil? And then the next question you guys are going to ask me is... Okay, how did evil come into existence? I'm glad you asked me that one. That was a great follow-up question. <laughs> Two great questions. You guys are so smart. <laughs> what is evil? And how did evil come into existence here on this earth? Or in the heavens even? Because evil is both a mystery and a problem. And in the mystery of evil lies the problem. You follow me? Evil is both a mystery. How did it come into existence? And evil is also a problem because we're dealing with evil here on this earth. It's a problem. Not just terrorists, but just evil in general. Murderers, so on and so forth. Evil. So evil is a mystery, and evil is a problem, but in the mystery of evil... There lies the problem. All right. Are you guys with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. You got to follow up because we're going to lay brick upon brick and precept upon precept. It's like math class. If you got lost in two plus two, you're, you're done. <laughs> you're done. You can't get into algebra. I hate algebra anyway. Amen. That's not my thing. My son, Nehemiah, he's smart in math. 
Yeah, he got it probably from my wife because he didn't get it from me. <laughs> I am horrible in math. You know, when, when, the, when the teacher said you would never have a calculator with you all the time, they didn't know the future. <laughs> I got a calculator with me all the time. I ain't got to know that stuff. <laughs> See, I know you older, younger people don't understand when the teachers used to tell you that. But I was, when I was in school, that, that's what they would tell us. You got to learn it because you won't have a calculator with, all, with you all the time. But they never heard of the smartphone. Neither did I at the time, but I, I believed in it. Amen. I said, one day. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but it did. All right. None and nobody can deny that evil exists in the world. Because to deny evil is to deny reality. Nobody can say, oh, there's no such thing as evil. Because then you live in la-la land. You, you live with the Smurfs or something. Because everybody knows there's evil that exists in this world. Because that's one of the main things they use against God. Well, if God's real, how can there be evil? So nobody denies there's evil in the world. Anybody in their right mind that can think properly will deny that evil exists. Evil exists in the world, amen? Are we all on the same page here? Anybody here deny evil? All right, we're good then. So that means if there was only the natural realm that existed, we couldn't talk about good and evil. Because there is evil that proves in itself that there's a supernatural realm that exists. So if you agree there's an evil that exists, then you also have to agree that there's a supernatural that exists. Because in order for evil to exist, the supernatural realm has to exist. See, this is when people don't know how to think. They just crazy, they just make up their own things. Well, the supernatural don't exist. No, it, there's an order. If evil exists, and you agree that evil exists, then you have to agree in order for evil to exist, then the supernatural realm has to exist. How do we know this? Let me share an example with you. Everyone heard of the thing called the Holocaust? Now, does anyone believe that the Holocaust was good? Does anyone believe that the Holocaust was evil? Amen. Okay. I'm talking to the right church then. So, we couldn't judge that the Holy Cost was evil or murder is evil. How many agree murder is evil? All right. So here we go. You can't judge that the Holy Cost is evil. You can't judge that murder is evil or that saving someone's life is good if good and evil didn't exist. How can you judge something's good and how can you just judge something that is evil if good and evil doesn't exist? So good and evil has to exist. In order for good and evil to exist, the supernatural realm has to exist. Are you following me? Because they exist, the supernatural realm exists. That's the only way they can exist. You can't have good without the evil here to exist without a supernatural realm. Because in the supernatural realm is where evil exists. Are you following me? All right. So then that leads us to the question that you first asked me because you guys are so intelligent. If evil exists, we're all in agreement now that evil exists, how did it come into existence? And then the main question that everybody asks who don't believe in God, and if God is good, how can there be evil in the world? How many have ever heard that question? And you don't know how to answer it. You just say, well, because. Well, I'm going to give you how to answer this now. I'm already giving you the framework. 
that you can start working down. Because anyone who can think logically. Now, if someone who lives in Smurfville, they're not going to think logically, and the Bible calls them a fool. He says, don't, mess your, don't waste your time with pigs. I got three of you that believe that. Amen. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. He said, don't throw your pearls to the what? Swine. To the swine. So if you can't get people to follow you logically, then don't waste your time. They're a pig. Y'all got to be able to call what it is. I mean, I'm not telling you to tell them in their face now. <laughs> hey, man, you're a pig. My pastor told me to tell you. <laughs> and then you come back with a black eye. Pastor, I told him he was a pig and he punched me. <laughs> but take it for Jesus. <laughs> I'm not telling you to say it out loud verbally. I'm just telling you, they're a pig. Don't waste your time. Because they can't think logically. They're, they're, they're already manipulated. They need deliverance. They need healing so that they can think logically. Because if someone, you go up to someone and tell them two plus two is four, and they say, no, it's not, it's five. What are you going to do? They're a pig. They can't think logically. That's what it is. No matter where you're at in life, two plus two will always equal four. It's the logical process of thinking. And if someone doesn't think that way, there's nothing you can do. All right, here we go. So if God created evil, how could God be good? And if God didn't create evil, how could evil exist? Because remember, the question was, if God is good, how could there be evil in the world? And then if God created evil, these are two questions that people would have. If God created evil, then how could God be good? And if God didn't create evil, then how could evil exist? Are we thinking now? See, we're going down a logical path here. This is all lines up with scripture. We're going to all line it up. Now, if evil was created, it wouldn't be a problem nor would it be evil. If evil was created, in other words, if God created evil, then evil wouldn't be a problem. Follow me now. So why is evil a problem? Because evil is a problem because it wasn't created. It shouldn't exist, but it does. Isn't that crazy? Evil shouldn't exist, but it does. No one can deny it. So I, I see some of you stinking because I see smoke coming out. <laughs> so if evil was created, it wouldn't be a problem, nor would it be evil. If evil is a problem, evil is a problem because it wasn't created. It shouldn't exist, but it does. So evil exists and it defies the created order. Check this out. Evil, the existence of evil defies the created order. It exists in opposition to the created order. order in defiance of existence. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Evil exists in defiance of created order. Because when God created the heavens and the earth, he didn't create evil. But yet, evil exists. And evil exists in defiance of created order. Because God didn't create that order. He only created good. He didn't create evil. But yet, evil still exists. How many are confused now? <laughs> Amen. Follow me. I'm going to get you unconfused. 
We're in the middle of the recipe of making enchiladas. We're just in the cheese, and it's all going to come together. It's all going to come together. Now, evil is not a force like an earthquake or a tornado or a fire. Evil is not a force. All those things, earthquakes, tornadoes, and fires, they all bring calamity and destruction, but they're not true evil. See, an earthquake, a tornado, a fire, they bring calamity like evil does. They bring destruction like evil does, but they're not true evil. We're going. We're going someplace now. Tornadoes are not evil, but murderers are. Tornado is not evil, but a murderer, we all agree, is evil. We said that. But a tornado is not evil, even though it creates destruction, even though it creates calamity. So then, what's the difference? I'm glad you asked. Why? Why are tornadoes not evil, but murderers are evil? Everyone say why. Good, good, good. I just want to make sure you wanted to know. I'm going to tell you why. Next week. No. <laughs> What's my, okay. My time is flying here, man, and I got a lot to go through still. The tornado is an impersonal force. It acts without consciousness. It acts without will. It acts without choice. It acts without volition or intent. A tornado doesn't say, well, you know what? I'm going to, um, to Roger's house only. I'm just going to destroy that house. Everyone else's house, I'm going to leave alone because I don't like Roger. A tornado doesn't do that. It doesn't act on its own will. It's not thinking, okay, here's this house. I'm going to go around it. I'm going to go around Pastor Rob's house because I like him. But Rolando's house, I don't like him. So I'm, I'm destroying his house. <laughs> tornadoes don't do that. How many of you ever seen a tornado do that? A tornado just goes. It has no choice. It has no conscience. It's not saying, well, you know, this house has kids, so I'm not going to touch it. And this house has no kids, and they're rich, so I'm going to destroy that house. It doesn't have a conscious, a tornado. It doesn't have a will. It doesn't have a choice. It, it doesn't even have intent. It's not thinking, oh, <laughs> I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to destroy everything, man. I can't wait till tomorrow because, man, that's my intent. No, a tornado doesn't have any of those things. Tornado is an impersonal force. Now, on the other hand, the murderer kills with conscious intent. The murderer has a will and volition. And that's what makes a murderer evil. It decides to murder, whether in the heat of the moment or not. It has a will and a choice not to do it. Whether it's influenced by demonic spirits or not, it still has its own will. A murderer, a person, has a choice, has a conscience, has an intent, has volition. And that's what makes something evil. So a tornado, a fire, an earthquake is not evil. It's a calamity. It's sad. But it's not evil. A murderer, that's evil. Do we understand the difference now? Yeah. All right. Because in order for you to continue with me, you got to understand this. If you all, everyone understands, everyone say amen. amen. If you don't understand, say hallelujah. All right, we got a couple of you. All right. I'll get you there. I'll get you there. Evil is not an impersonal force, but a personal one. Evil is a personal force. Evil is an inversion of truth, of reality, 
and existence. Because we, are, we all understand evil shouldn't exist. Now, evil has no true existence. So it acts to bring that which exists into non-existence. Evil seeks destruction. Now, here's how you can easily understand what evil is. Evil is a parasite that needs created order to exist. Do you understand that? Evil is a parasite. See, a parasite can't exist on its own. It needs to suck out from somewhere in order for it to exist. That's what a parasite means. So in order for evil to exist, it needs created order to exist. Without created order, we would have no evil. Because evil on its own cannot exist. Do you understand? Okay. Evil can exist without good. But good can exist without evil. Because evil is not in the created order, but good is. God created it and said, this is what? Good. See, now you're following me. Good exists because God created it. Evil can only exist because good exists. On its own, evil cannot exist because it's a parasite. It needs to feed off created order. So evil cannot exist without good, but good can exist without evil. Truth can exist without lies, but lies cannot exist without truth. See, in order to have a lie, that means there has to be truth. Because you can't lie about something that's not true, that doesn't have a truth behind it. Somewhere there has to be a truth, and that's why you lie. Truth exists because it's in created order. Lies exist because it's a parasite of truth. It needs truth to exist. A lie cannot exist unless there's a truth. It's created order. So you got to follow this and how this all is going to come together and how you can share this with logical thinking of how you can bring someone to the feet of Christ as well. Because evil lies cannot exist without good and without truth. Created order. All right, follow me. Destruction requires structure. If you want to have destruction, there has to be a structure. You can't destroy something that is not created. Just like a building. When you destroy a building and, and, and they bring out and destroy it, how can you destroy something that doesn't exist? A structure has to exist in order for it to be destroyed. See, everything in natural that you see with your physical eyes just speak about the spiritual realm. You cannot have structure, destruction, without structure. Immorality requires morality. You can't be, have someone who's immoral unless you have morality. Morality has to exist in order for immorality to exist. You got to have fidelity in order for infidelity to exist. Someone can't be infidelity, infidelity can't exist in a marriage unless there's fidelity. Because why? It was a created order by God. Follow me. What's created by God? Sin can't exist without holiness. Sin is a parasite of holiness. If there's no holiness, then there is no sin. You see, everything that is evil exists and speaks about the truth. So if you agree that those things exist, then you got to agree 
that God exists. Now, if you don't agree that God exists, you're a fool. You're a pig. You don't understand the truth of God. And you are like what the Bible says. You've exchanged the truth of God for a lie of the enemy. And you're blind. That's why the Bible says you have to be able to see spiritually. When you're blinded, you can't see these things. But when God opens your eyes, all of a sudden, you're enlightened to the spirit realm and you see, wow, this all exists. Now follow me. I wish we could go in deeper, but we got to go. So if evil is uncreated, then how did it come into existence? Right? Amen? Amen. All right. We understand that God didn't create evil. It wasn't in created order. He didn't create good, and he didn't create, then say, I'm going to create evil. God didn't create evil. He created personhood. He created consciousness, and he created free will. This is important to understand. What did God create? Because that's going to help us to understand how did evil come into existence. If you do good because you have no free will, then it isn't good. If you do good because you're forced to, it's of no value. Good is not good then. Good is, becomes forced. Just like, you know, a simple way is like those of us who have children. If you have to tell your, your child to say that they love you, it's not the same as they saying it on their own, right? Tell me you love me. I love you. Oh, you don't mean it. <laughs> How many wives do that to the husband? Tell me you love me, honey. I love you. You don't mean it. You just said it because I told you. But when they say it out of the blue, you're like, oh, it melts your heart. You're like, oh, they really love me. Why? Because it was done out of their own free will. They didn't have you with the frying pan behind them saying, say it, say it now, before I hit you on the head with this thing. Then it's, 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 it's invaluable. It's, it's invalid. I mean, free will is important. So if you do good because you have no free will, then it really isn't good. See, good must be freely chosen, and it needs free will. In order for something to be good, that means free will has to exist. Amen? And there's the problem. To allow free will to choose good, what do you risk? You risk someone choosing the what? Evil, the opposite. See, when free will exists, and God created free will, and he gave it to us, now God ran the risk that he gave us free will to choose between good and evil. Now we have a choice that God is not going to step in and say, no, you can't choose it. Because we would have saw that in the beginning in Genesis, right? When God told Adam and Eve, or specifically told Adam, you can eat from any tree but the tree of what? <laughs> you can eat from any tree but the tree of good and evil. But you have free choice. I'm not going to step in. Because if I step in, then you're only choosing good because I stepped in. Then I didn't give you free will. I didn't create that. See, God created free will. And in there lies the problem because now we have a choice. You can choose the opposite. Now, there are two entities that God created with the ability to choose good and evil. One is us humans, and the others are what? Amen. 
angels. <laughs> and the other is what? Angels. Yeah, I mean, you guys are smart. You guys are so smart. See, you got to understand this. God gave them the ability of free will as well. And that's, that's not Pastor Rob saying it. It's confirmed in the word. For those of you who know the word. So he created two entities. Humans and angels. And he gave them the ability to choose between good and evil. And there was an angelic entity that turned against the created order and against existence. So we see in the scriptures that there was an angel who took that ability of free will and he turned against created order. And he turned against existent. And he chose the opposite. And he chose evil. He became the twisted reality and the twister of reality. Check that out. This entity, this angelic being, which every one of them had a choice, but he was the first one to lead this thing, he became the twisted reality and the twister of reality. He will twist the truth. And in his inversion, he became the anti-being, the parasitic inversion of the good, the nemesis of reality. Now, when he made that choice, he became a parasite. His existence became only now because good existed. Are you following me? All right, I tell you, we're going deep. We're not, we're not doing scratch your ear things. And this is just laying the foundation so we can understand about Palestine and Hamas and all that. This is just the groundwork. We got to lay a groundwork foundation in order to understand the deeper revelations of God. See, if you don't understand this, then you're going to be totally against me when I talk to you about Palestine and the Palestinians, and the election. Amen? Amen? Now, this entity became the one who shouldn't exist, but does. And he became the devil. He shouldn't exist. In created order, the devil shouldn't exist. But he does. And how does he exist? Because good exists. See, the devil testifies of the truth. Oh, man. Let me tell the balcony people that. Because <laughs> some of you are like upset the devil exists. No. You should be glad because that's God showing you. Because he exists. God exists and truth exists and the freedom that flows in the spirit of the Lord exists because the only way for the devil Satan himself to exist is because good exists. Somebody praise God. Come on. Now this entity, the devil has many names. Look in the scriptures. He's called the prince of darkness. He's called Beelzebul. He's called the father of lies. He's called the lord of the flies. He's called the devil. And he's also called Satan. Now, he's pictured in our history as someone in a red suit with a little pointy tail and a pitchfork, right? That's how, that's how we present him in, in, in our history. But in reality, he's a dark and present danger for us. 
He's not this little guy in a red suit with the pitchfork, little pointing little ears, uh, 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 pointing tail in a red suit. That's not who the devil is. He is a dark and present danger for each and every one of us. Now, the English word Satan comes from a Hebrew word called Satan, which means opponent, adversary, or enemy. So Satan in the Hebrew is where we get the English word from. And I know, if you ever watched that movie Wreck-It Ralph? Have you ever seen that one? When Satan's in there and he says, no, my name is Satan. Well, that's where he got it from. That's where they got it from. It's the Hebrew word for Satan. It means opponent, adversary, and enemy. Now, Satan defies existence. He shouldn't exist. He defies existence. He shouldn't be here, but he is. He's not an enemy, but he is the enemy. Did you get that? He's not an enemy. He is the enemy. He's the one at war with all created beings. He's at war with us. He's not coming over to have dinner with you. He's at war with you. The Bible says he wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. He's not your friend. Those, those dum-dums that say, well, I'm going to go to hell, me and the devil, we're going to smoke it up and drink it up. You ain't gonna, you're going to be smoking, but you ain't going to be smoking with him. <laughs> your body going to be smoking because of the burning that's going to be going on. That's not a place where you want to be. Don't let the devil tell you, oh yeah, me and my boys, man, we're going to get high, we're going to get drunk, and we're going to be chilling with the demons and the devil. No. You've been deceived. He is the enemy. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy you. That shows you how the lack of knowledge you are have. The Bible says you're a fool to believe that. Because... This earth testifies to God. The natural realm testifies to the supernatural realm. But the enemy wants to keep your eyes closed. The media wants to keep your eyes closed. That's why it's pushing hard in these last days. From news to manipulation. We'll get there. Definitely not today though. See, the Greek word for Satan, we know Hebrew, uh, Satan, the Greek word for Satan is diabolos, which I've shared with you many times, which means one who throws across or casts through, diabolos. In other words, he throws accusations at you. He throws slander at you. He attacks you until he can get through, and that's why he's our adversary. And where does he like to attack the most? Your mind. It's just like throwing a rock against a window. You keep throwing it and keep throwing it until you bust through. That's why when you ask yourself, man, why do I keep getting attacked? It's because he's diabolos. He's doing what he does. What his name says. He'll keep attacking until you finally give up and he breaks in. And then like I share with you, once he breaks in, he brings in the construction crew, builds a fortress, and from there, from your mind, now he's controlling, putting thoughts, and now, now, now you're messed up. Now you need deliverance. We don't have time for none of that, but let's go. Satan is an inversion of the truth. That's who Satan is. He's an inversion of the truth. Look at John chapter 8, verse 44. It says this. John chapter 8, verse 44. It says, the beginning part, the first part. That's the second half. You are the father. You, you are of your father, the devil, Diabolos, Satan. 
and the desires of your father you want to do. What is his desires? He was a murderer from the beginning. It does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and a what? He's the father of lies. See, as lies exist in a parasitic relationship to the truth, Satan exists in relationship to God. The inversion of good. He's not the opposite of God. He is the inversion of God. See, there's a big difference. Opposite means equal. He's not the opposite. Nor is evil the opposite of good. It's the inversion. And there's a huge difference. Because when you think opposite, you think same level, same power. Satan doesn't have the same power. Evil doesn't have the same power as good. They are inversions of each other. That means they're a parasite. They live off of the created order. Satan is the opposer of existence and wages war against it. See, that's why he's at war with us. He's the opposer of existence. He hates existence. See, because why? God is existence. That's why he hates existence. Because God is existence. God says his name is I am. He is the one who is and by whom all things come into being. So Satan, war centers on God. That was a declaration of war when Abraham asked God, who should I tell them that sent me? And God says, tell them I am. That was a declaration of war against Satan. Because Satan was in war against existence, which is against God. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14 says this. This is what Satan says. Because God says, I am. Satan has his I am's. He says, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. See, Satan wants to take the place of God and destroy him. Because if he could destroy God, he could end existence. That's why he went after Jesus so hard. If I can destroy God, I can destroy existence. And I'll destroy all his created beings. And since that is impossible, though, he concentrates his war against the things of God. He attacks the will of God. Why is the will of God being attacked in your life? Because Satan is against it. He can't destroy God. He can't destroy existence. He tried. He tried. He tried many times. He tried with Moses. He tried with Isaac. He tried with Abraham. He tried with Jacob. He tried with Jesus Christ himself. It wasn't from lack of trying. He tried to destroy existence before it could exist. He tried to destroy the great, 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 great grandparents of Jesus before they ever existed, before they could grow up. And then he went after Jesus himself and he thought he destroyed him. That's why he threw such a big party. What we celebrated today, the Holy Communion, that's why he celebrated because he thought he finally did it. But he's so dumb, he didn't know he was just falling into the prophetic alignment of God so that we could be restored with our relationship with God the Father. So Satan concentrates his war against the will of God over your life, against the plans and purposes of God over your life. He concentrates on God's creation. I can't destroy God but guess what? I can destroy his creation. 
And if you look at the world today, he's been doing a great job of it. Because now, what do we have? We have all kinds of craziness going on. We have men that believe they're women, women that believe they're men. We have men and women believing they're neutral. <laughs> Binary. How can you be neutral? You either one or the other, but they believe it. God is, I can just believe it's like, wow. How can my creation fall for these lies when they see the truth right in front of them? But Satan, he's there. He's attacking. He's concentrating on his creation. Because he wants to destroy the best creation of God, which is us. See, that's why he's really after us now. He already did his havoc in the heavens with the angels. He destroyed a whole bunch of them. The Bible says over a third. He destroyed them. But it's not the same as destroying us. God's pride and joy. His creation that he created when he created man and woman. John 8.44 told us that he was a murderer from the beginning. I'm going to ask the worship team, get ready. We are created in the image of God. That's what the Bible says. Every one of you were created in the image of God. And if he can destroy us, Satan can destroy the image of God. You wonder why is God, the enemy, after you so bad? Because you have the image of God on you. And he wants that destroyed because every time he sees it, it makes him so upset. He says, I can't get God, but I can destroy the image of God. That's why you're his number one enemy. That's why he's after you now. Satan does this by separating us from God. He removes a creation from its creator, which in turn removes us from our purpose of existence. See, that's what God wants us, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to separate us from God so he can remove the creation from its creator and remove us from the purpose of why do we exist. See, once you lose the reality of why you exist, then life is meaningless. Life has no purpose. You just say, I live, and then I die. And that's it. And if God, the enemy has you like that, I'm here to tell you there's hope. When we don't know our purpose of existence, we can be destroyed. But there's hope in Jesus. There's hope in Jesus. And this is the foundation for these next weeks coming up. We had to understand this first. We had to understand what evil was. How did it come into existence? Evil exists as a parasite. It was never created. It came about because of free will. It is in total opposition to good. But I'm here to tell you, if you lost what the will of God is in your life, you feel like Diabolos, the devil, is attacking your mind constantly, throwing rocks at you, accusations. Then the Spirit of the Lord is here to set you free. Let's stand. Next week, come prepared. Bring somebody, because it's, it's going to rock you, I'm telling you. As I'm reading, learning, hearing, it's rocking me. I'm learning right with you. It's not that I know all these things, it's that I study 
to show myself approved. I learn from others. Don't think this is coming from Pastor Rob. This is coming from the Spirit and others who are teaching that I'm reading and learning and listening and growing because I want to grow for you guys. I want to bring you old news. I want to bring things to you that are currently taking place so you can understand why this is so important but especially to bring the good news to the captives. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor, the devil, Diablo, Satan, is attacking me, trying to destroy the image of God in my life. And I need prayer. I want you to make your way to the tribe here and they're going to pray for you. If you're online and you need prayer, just type in the word freedom. Just type in the word freedom. So right now, right where you're at, in Jesus' name, let there be freedom. Loosen those that the enemy is trying to prevent from receiving their blessing, their healing, their miracle right now, in Jesus' name. Come, come. This altar is open for you. Make your way. Those of you online, just type in the word freedom. And we're going to pray with you that you are set free in Jesus' name. Just type in the word freedom. The rest of you just come here in the sanctuary. We have many people from the tribe that are waiting for you. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't let the enemy steal your freedom in Jesus' name. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And today, you shall be free in Jesus' name. You shall be free in Jesus' name. The adversary, the devil, the liar, the destroyer, He's removed out of your life right now. In Jesus' name. Father, there's more than what we see with our physical eyes. There is that supernatural realm. God, we are created in your image with free will. And we choose with our free will to love you, to serve you. We come against the lies of the enemy, the twisting, the manipulation, the Leviathan spirits that try to lie to us. We come against them right now in Jesus' name. And we proclaim and declare freedom over our lives. There's realms beyond this natural realm. There is a war going on. Evil exists in this world. And we don't want to be sucked into its lies. We want to understand what true freedom is. And now that we know how evil came into this world, we know how to fight against it. We know how to stand against the evils of this world. Because we choose to serve God. We choose to love God. We choose the blessings of God. And we declare and decree every enemy, every lying spirit, every witchcraft spirit be removed out of our lives. We want to walk in total freedom. If there's anyone that is dealing with some pains in your bodies, come. The healing is flowing here. If you need healing in your body, come, come. Come. If you need healing online, just type in the word healing. If you need freedom, type in freedom. Or we're believing. 
God is going to do a mighty work. A mighty, mighty work in you. I pray, Lord, open up the minds of people to hear your word, to understand the word, to understand the revelation that will be coming forth in these next weeks, next months. God, we pray for our nation as it enters into this last 40 some days before our election. We pray that the mercy of God will be upon us. God, we humble ourselves before you as a nation. We cry out to you as a nation. Lead us, guide us. We don't want to be directed by the enemy. We don't want to be directed by evil. We want evil to die in our lives. That it cannot feed off of the good of our lives. We cast out every evil mindset, evil traps out of our lives. Father, we pray for Alma and her left shoulder. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. Touch that shoulder on the left-hand side. Right now in Jesus' name. I pray right now, God, that the fire of the Holy Spirit would touch that left shoulder. Even now, she would feel the heat of the Spirit working in that left shoulder. That left shoulder shall be restored. We declare and decree full restoration to Abma's left shoulder. Father, that she be able to move it without pain. Freely in Jesus' name. That is not the will of God for her life to be in pain in that left shoulder. We declare freedom, healing upon that left shoulder right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus. I pray that your left shoulder is feeling better, Alma. We believe in Jesus Christ, Jehovah Rapha, our healer.
Amen. For those of you that need to leave, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you safe and healthy. Allow those that are continuing to pray to pray. You all can fellowship in the Welcome Center. We'll see you next Sunday. Invite someone because it's going to be another drop and bomb of revelation of what God is going to reveal to us in this near future of what's going on presently and what does the word of God say. God bless you all. You are dismissed. Allow those to pray. Um, talk and fellowship in the Welcome Center. In Jesus' name, God bless.